it's here, it's here. The biggest update to iPad ever is finally here. Let's get right into it. So Apple just released iOS and iPad OS 16.2 and this update has two features that are going to change everything on the iPad. The first and arguably the biggest update to iPad ever is proper and full external display support. This is something that Apple teased months ago. It feels like forever now and it was supposed to come out with iOS and iPad OS 16 we didn't get it because it was glitchy and buggy and didn't work as planned. And so many developers were just saying, you know what, this is pointless, just ax it because it's not working. And this feature had its own controversies as well. Because of the way it interacted with an external display, it was a very iPad unique experience AKA extremely frustrating compared to a regular computer. Apple has its own unique iPad way of doing things and it doesn't always make sense. And a lot of people were frustrated that it wasn't what they wanted. And the other big controversy was that this feature was only going to be available on M series level chips, which just leaves everyone else in the dust. And I was pissed because I wanted this on my iPad mini so badly, but I understood that this might be a more desktop class chip feature. I do understand the people People who bought an iPad Pro that wasn't an M1 iPad Pro, they were justifiably upset, and I think rightfully so, and I think Apple was able to fix that. Anyway, enough about that, let's jump right into it. The external display support works perfectly. You can use it on external displays, or like me, you can plug it into a TV via an HDMI dongle, which I think is so freaking awesome. The reason why I was so excited is because now the iPad is more of this professional device that you can take with you on the go and then plug into a workstation and do what you want, but it's still very, very mobile. And I think that's awesome. I remember when eGPUs started becoming a thing and I thought, you know what? This might be the future of computing. You have a small, light, very easy notebook that you take everywhere with you. And then when you're working at a dedicated workstation, you plug in to an eGPU for the actual powerhouse. And then when you go on the road again, you don't need that. And that's kind of what we're seeing with the iPad on here, that you have this nice built-in screen, but now at a dedicated workstation, you can just extend its capabilities even more. I've had no issue plugging it into my TV and I am able to do full screen productivity apps, which is awesome. The fact that I can get full screen Lightroom on a TV and use that for editing, I think that is so, so cool. Not only is this feature great for productivity if I'm editing photos or video or typing out a long essay or a script, this is great for entertainment as well. And this is honestly one of the reasons I was most excited about this update, watching content and gaming. Watching content is exactly what you expect it to be. You plug it into an external display and it takes up the full screen and it's beautiful and I love that. But gaming was what I was really excited about and I was very intrigued to see how it would interact on a full screen external display because if the iPad Pro can take up full screen on TVs or external displays, this really starts to beg the question, do I need a console? Look how portable this is. I can do a lot of powerful gaming on an M2 iPad Pro, and if I'm traveling or going to a hotel or just plugging in at a friend's desktop, that's a very viable option suddenly. And unfortunately, the two games that I'm currently playing do not support full screen, and it's very unfortunate. So I don't know if that's on the developer end or if that's on Apple's end. I don't know what needs to happen. Clearly, something still needs to happen to optimize that gaming experience for the full screen external displays, because when I attempted to go full screen on both Genshin Impact and Star Wars LEGO, it just shrunk the window even more and I don't know why that is. <laughs> but the default basic non full screen shrunken version is just the default screen mirroring aspect ratio experience that we got previously. So I'm a little bit disappointed, but I'm hopeful that developers and whatnot will optimize and update their apps to take advantage of this wonderful feature. The next big update is the Freeform app. Now I know a lot of people were really excited about this app. I was not one of those people who was really excited. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not in school anymore. I'm not taking notes on certain things. I think this would have been really, really useful in school and in university. The fact that I can just draw and do a crazy brainstorming session and it just all works in this app and it's just infinite. I think that's a really cool concept. And even though I'm not an Apple Pencil user, I feel like people will really love the Apple Pencil with this feature, but I'm not about that life. The fact that you can collaborate with others is also really, really cool. So it's just, 
It's a great tool, and if I do find myself using it in the future, I'm glad that it exists. There are a couple other minor updates in this, like the new Apple Music Sing, so if you want to do karaoke with your friends, you can now do that. It follows along, you can adjust the vocals and just listen to the instrumental, and I think that's really nice. It's a nice, fun thing to have with friends. There's some better data protection and whatnot as well, but the two big updates are the Freeform app, and external display support with Stage Manager. But I wanna know what you guys think. Do you think the iPad with this feature is now capable of replacing a laptop? Let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Mark Steiner, and I'll see you next time.